My name is Megan, and I would like to tell you the story about my journey to the past. A short time ago, my family moved into a new home. Well, it wasn't exactly new, but it was very spacious. It might have looked like an old shack with spiderwebs and ghosts in the attic, but my parents and I had an idea of how to make it look great, both inside and outside. Among all the other ideas, we decided to turn our backyard into a beautiful garden. While my parents were working inside the house, I started the gardening project, with the first thing that needed to be done, creating a garden bed. I was so happy to be out there working and dug a few feet into the ground when suddenly my shovel hit something hard. My heart started beating faster with anticipation. What if I had just found a skull, or maybe a chest filled with golden coins, which would have made us enormously rich? It did actually turn out to be a metal case, but there was no money in there. Just an old watch with an almost disintegrated white leather strap and Mickey Mouse on the watch face. A round tin can with celluloid film inside. And a note. Being careful not to harm the film, I set it aside and opened the note. It was written by someone named Darla. She wished whoever found this treasure all the best and hoped that when it happened, the world would have remained prosperous and people would already have figured out how to fly to the stars. She also enclosed a gift, her favourite wristwatch. The note was dated 1958. The note did not reveal what was on the film, so I was very eager to find out. I couldn't stop thinking about it, up to the moment when I finally found a film projector online. I'm not really a shopper, so I could afford to buy it using money from my own savings. I also spent some time learning how to play an old movie without ruining the film. This whole experience turned out to be an interesting adventure. Finally, I was able to watch the three-minute movie, which consisted of a few scenes. My house was in a newly built cottage. The view of our street, where I recognised a few young trees, fully grown by now. To my surprise, the street had not really changed over the past 60 years. The cars, though, were totally different. Now, the cars from the film are a rarity, and it felt strange to see them parked by almost every yard. In the last shot was the pretty girl smiling and waving at the camera, with our house in the background. I figured out it must be Darla, and I wanted to know more about her. She must be over 70 years old by now. The first thing I did was ask all the neighbours. Unfortunately, none of them had lived here 60 years ago, so they knew nothing about Darla. Then I went to the city archives. I did not learn much, but I did find a record about the family that lived at my present address in 1958. The last name on there was at least a starting point. I continued my investigation and finally got a phone number. When I called, a grown-up male answered the phone. I told him that currently I live at the house where his family used to live and asked him if he knew Darla. That's my grandma, he replied but she's losing her memory, and for the last few years she's lived in a nursing home. The conversation made me sad. In the film I saw a young smiling girl, full of life and energy, and it felt strange to realise that now she has grown old, and even lost her memory. I decided to visit her anyway. I went to the nursing home where she lived, and told the personnel who I was, and what I had found. They did not object to me meeting Darla, and showing her the things that she had left half a century ago. A nurse even showed me the way to Darla's room. I saw a nice-looking old lady in her 70s, wrapped up in a warm, checkered plaid blanket. She was confused when she saw me, and for some reason decided that I was her great-granddaughter. I neither objected nor confirmed her thoughts. I just sat close to her and showed her the case that I had dug out of my garden with all the things inside. Darla thoughtfully twirled her old wristwatch in her hands while I played her the video from the old celluloid that I had shot on my smartphone's camera. Believe it or not, Darla remembered how she recorded it. She did not realise who I was, but she told me very confidently about the idea to leave a time capsule for people from the future. I listened to her memories about that day in particular and about life in general, what it was like 60 years ago. It was an interesting experience to see how people perceived the future over half a century ago. I was still thinking about it when I got home. I found a metal case that looked almost like the one Darla had buried in 1958. I made a video with my new house and the street where Darla shot her movie over half a century ago. After that, I made a video of myself, sitting in front of my notebook, showing that the present world is not confined by only one reality. 
My video was much longer than Dala's, since, unlike her, I was not limited by the celluloid film length. I copied the video to my flash drive and put it in a can together with my smartwatch. I did not leave a note, but I recorded a live message to people of the future. I hope, as well as Dala did, that the future world would be safe and interesting. And if, by that time, humanity would not have already moved to Mars or another planet in the galaxy, I would very much like that somebody discover my time capsule 60 years from now. And who knows, maybe we'll meet. I buried both cases, Dala's and mine, in the same place in the backyard. And I think I'll tell Grandma Dala about my capsule in detail when I go visit her next time. Please write in the comments if you have ever thought about how the world changes.